Here we see some examples of closed planar curves with different winding numbers. In this video, we will see what this winding number is all about. Let's take a closer look at one example. In order to be able to talk about the winding number, we need to specify an orientation of the curve. In other words, a direction of travel. There are two options for this. We can either run the curve in this direction or the other way around. Let's take this direction. As the curve is traversed once, we look at the velocity vector at each point of the curve and observe how it constantly changes direction. Now we enter the red velocity vector a second time, this time with a fixed base point so that it appears like the hand in a clock. After a complete run through the curve, this hand will come to rest at the same position as at the start of the run. In this example, it points to 12 o'clock. Let us now imagine that the red hand is the minute hand of a clock and add a black hand as the hour hand. If we now run through the curve once, the minute hand will return to its original position, but not necessarily the hour hand. In this example, the hour hand has moved back by one hour. We then say that the curve has winding number one. If the hour hand had moved back by two hours, the curve would have winding number two. If the black hand had moved forward by one hour, the winding number would be negative one. The reason why the winding number is negative when the hour hand moves forward and positive when it moves back is that a clockwise passage of a curve corresponds to the mathematically negative sense. However, this is just a convention that is not really that important. What happens if we reverse the orientation of the curve, in other words, run it in the opposite direction? Then the minute hand moves backwards compared to before, and because the hour hand previously moved back by one hour, it now moves forward by one hour. In our example, this means that the winding number is now negative one. In general, if the orientation of a curve is reversed, the winding number changes sign. The second example looks like the infinity sign in mathematics. Our curves may therefore have self-intersections. We see that the hour hand returns to the same position after one cycle as it was at the beginning. In this case, the winding number is zero. Here is another example. Perhaps pause the video briefly at this point and think about what the winding number of this curve might be. As we can see, the winding number is equal to negative one. Finally, a wild example. Let's see what happens if we run through this curve once. We can see that the hour hand has come to a stop at 12 o'clock again where it was at the beginning. Does this mean that the winding number is zero? No, not really, because the hour hand has actually moved forward 12 times by one. This means that the winding number is not zero, but negative 12. But we can't see this on our clock because it only contains 12 hours. To solve this problem, we can increase the number of hours in our clock. In principle, we can look at clocks with any number of hours. We have only chosen 12 hours because that is what we are used to from conventional clocks. Let's take a clock with 20 hours instead of 12 and see what the result is. Lo and behold, the clock hand now points to 12 and not to the original position. The winding number is not zero, but negative 12. However, this clock has the same problem as the previous one if we look at a curve with a winding number of 20. Once again, we would not be able to distinguish its winding number from the winding number zero. To solve the problem, we need to replace the clock with a different construction. To do this, we imagine that the red velocity vector is firmly connected to a gear wheel that drives an infinitely long-toothed belt to which the black hand is attached. This pointer will always point to the correct winding number after a run. We have now developed a clear idea of what the winding number of a closed planar curve is. 
A detailed mathematical discussion of the winding number can be found, for example, in section 2.2 of this textbook.